My name is Ulf Bündgen. I'm Professor of Environmental Systems Analysis at the Department of Geography and I'm interested in understanding the ecology uh, of truffles, mainly in light of uh, ongoing global climate change. There are three main species of highest uh, scientific interest, but also of uh, gastronomic and culinary uh, interest. These are, this is a white truffle. This is growing in a very small area in northern Italy. And there is a black or perigord truffle that is widespread across the Mediterranean. And the third one, Burgundy truffle, and this one is mostly distributed across many parts of Europe, including the UK. Although uh, the Burgundy truffle is growing in this part of the UK, we still don't know anything about its ecology. Our research uh, highly depends on the skills of our uh, truffle dog, because uh, with, without a dog there is absolutely no way to get at least even an idea where they could grow. The dog is so skillful that he would actually scan them in this radius and then that's our only way and it's the best way uh, to harvest them. One of the biggest obstacles in our research uh, on, on truffle and the truffle ecology is that the life cycle uh, is occurring below ground. So when a dog is guiding us and starting to dig, we are starting to destroy its environment because the fruit body that we are actually interested in is living in a mycelium network. And if we destroy the soil surroundings, that's the same if, as if we would uh, basically take an apple from the tree. We can't analyze its growth afterwards anymore. The botanical garden, the botanical garden here in Cambridge, being located in an environment where we know truffles are occurring naturally, so we have the preferable climatic and geological conditions. The difference in the botanical garden is that most of the trees are growing on their own, so these are solitary trees. If we find a truffle, we know exactly with which tree they were growing in relationship, plus the variety of potential hosts is enormous. So the Botanic Garden was founded on this site in order to support the university's teaching and research. It's always had a major role in research. Um, the trees I'm standing in were planted by Darwin's mentor, John Henslow, um, in order to help think about the meaning of a species and the nature of variation, and these ideas led into the theory of evolution. So there are lots of firsts involved in this project. It's the first time we've looked at the truffles on the roots of our trees. It's the first time we've had a dog involved in a research project in the garden. But as far as we know, it's also the first time that anybody in the world's looked at which species of trees these truffles can grow on. And by definition, out in the wild, you get particular trees growing in particular habitats. Here, we've got our specific soil type and habitat, but we've got 2,000 different trees growing in it. So it's the first time anybody's really been able to ask that question, which species of trees they'll live on. Um, and it's a really great example of how the garden is a living laboratory for this kind of interdisciplinary research. Once Lucy has found a truffle, the first thing to do would be to stop her from eating it. And I will then place the truffle, um, the so-called fruiting body, into a bag and record the GPS data. Uh, then I will take the truffles to the lab where we will um, measure their weight and also their level of ripeness. And depending on how ripe the fruiting body is, you become witness to a truly magnificent and mysterious interaction between the plant and the fungus, which is then manifested by a beautiful labyrinth of white and caramel browns. Botanic gardens are really fascinating um, in the way that they can act as guardians for above-ground biodiversity. So with this study, um, we're actually trying to unravel the below ground diversity. So this adds a completely new dimension. It's like the merging of two worlds, of the way we understand nature and also the awareness we have about the huge variety which uh, lies beneath our feet and just waits to be discovered.